bring an unusual thought for a message tonight, Mark chapter number 6. Here in the book of Mark chapter 6, we'll begin reading with verse 14. You'd need to know a little bit about the first few chapters uh, to pick up with the story here. And uh, uh, Herod, the king, had, had John the Baptist killed for preaching against his sins. Now, it's birthday time. This thing comes back to haunt him, so to speak. Look at verse number 14. And King Herod heard of him. This is talking about Jesus now. For his name was spread abroad. And he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead. Therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias. And others said that it is a prophet or as one of the prophets. Look at verse 16. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John, whom I beheaded. He had risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod fear John, feared John, knowing that he was a just man and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, it said that Herod, on his birthday, made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it to thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. My, my. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in the charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry. Yet for his oath's sake and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king set an ex executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid him in a tomb. Now all of that happened, those last eight or nine verses there, before verses 14, 15, 16. It's recounting what had happened. And at this birthday party, Herod... Uh, heard somebody come in and said, Man, there's a guy out there raising dead people. He's healing lepers. He's giving sight to the blind. There's, it's a miracle. This man is supernatural. And the first thing Herod thought was John. His conscience had been bothering him, evidently, for having John killed. Because, see, he really respected John. And the first thing that hit his mind was, John the Baptist has come back and he's doing miracles and I'm in trouble. Now, that's human nature for us to think like that. Now, I want to take that thought tonight and I want to preach on the subject, the ghost, plural, of past sins. The ghost of past sin. Herod, the king, lived in the days of the preaching of John the Baptist. And the Lord Jesus Christ. He had this happen, and he thought, it's because of what I did. The old saying is, chickens come home to roost. The other old saying is, what goes around, comes around, goes around. And the old saying is, 
uh, whatsoever a man soweth, that, what the Bible said, shall he also reap. And no truer words have ever been spoken. Tonight, we're going to look at that truth from the Bible. By introduction, I want to say, back in September of 1953, in England, suddenly, people's TV, they on the TV screen, popped up KLEE TV from Houston, Texas. This popped up in England on people's TVs, and it was a little local station in Houston, Texas. They had no explanation for it whatsoever. KLEE TV had gone out of business three years earlier in 1950. And suddenly, in 1953 in England, it popped up on TV. That meant those, those, those waves, evidently, were out in outer space somewhere, evidently, floating around, and somehow entered the atmosphere and hit the antennas in England and showed up on TV. And people couldn't believe it. They were amazed. After three years, it all came back in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, sin is that way. Sin will come back to haunt you. It always has. It always will. It always does. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a known fact that your chickens do come home to roost. That's a scary thought, but I preach on the ghost of past sin. Now, I want to say three things this evening about this, and I want you to listen very carefully. Number one, I want to say the sin that brought this event to pass. He had a great desire for sin. Uh, the dance. They were having a dance. Nothing good's ever come out of, of dancing, of worldly dancing. David danced before the Lord with all his might, not with a woman, not to music, just dance and shout and praising God. That's not the kind of dancing they do on country western shows or MTV or VH1 or MTV. That kind of dancing always brings in the flesh and problems and sin. The old preachers used to say, a dancing foot and a praying knee don't grow on the same leg. And there's a lot of people today think, well, I go to the... I'm a senior preacher. I don't care if you're 100 or 10. A dancing foot and a praying knee don't grow on the same leg. You'll not pray and dance. You won't dance and pray. You'll quit one or the other. And the dance brought this event to pass. They never intended for it to end like that. We never do. And this girl come in, this little girl come in and started dancing. And she danced, and it got wicked, and hair was about half drunk probably. And he looked at that girl, his own daughter-in-law, uh, or his stepdaughter, and he looked at her, and he said, Man, you sure look good, honey. Uh, you can have anything you want. And the half of the kingdom. And she said, uh, Wait just a minute. I've already got everything, and my mama's, my mama's queen. I've already got a brand new uh, uh, Maserati as soon as I get my license. And I've got, uh, and I got a, a, a pass list and finest clothes and everything. She said, Mama, what should I ask? What do you want me to ask? Big mistake. A uh, backslid girl asks a more backslid mama what to do. And backslid mama gives the wrong advice to the backslid daughter. And she said, uh, Well, we got everything else. Get that preacher's head. Uh, what preacher? John, what pre John the Baptist. Uh, the Baptist. She didn't ask for that Methodist head. She didn't ask for that Presbyterian head. She didn't ask for that Pentecostal head. She asked for that Baptist preacher's head. I didn't write it. I just preach it. They've always preached against dancing. And, and as you let them other crowd go, she said, get me that Baptist preacher's head. And you know the story. They went and there, John, there was old John in prison. His ministry had preceded the ministry of Jesus Christ himself. And there was old John down there and in an old nasty prison, rats and, and roaches and everything running around. And there he was, bless his heart, he said there, and the executioner came down there and he said, Hot, son, let's go. 
He said, uh, where are we going? Am I getting out? Did the Lord deliver me? He said, uh, I'm afraid not. Right, let's go. We're going to the chopping block. And old John walked up through there, and all he could think of is, well, I've done my best, Lord. I told him, and he said, I'm starting to worry. Are, are you? Am I really right? Am I sure? Are, are you really? I mean, I reckon that's really him? And said, somebody's following him. He said, go over and ask that guy, Jesus, if he's really him. And so they took off and run over a little while. They went and found Jesus, and they said they're about ready to kill my master. And he said, he wants to know if you are really the Messiah. He told us, come and ask you. And Jesus looked back at him. He said, you go tell John. He said, the main walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And they said, all right, we'll go tell him. He's getting a little worried and doubt. And he said, and, and, and blessed is he, whoever's not offended in me. So they run over here. And John right here is a chopping block. And they said, can we talk to him for a minute? And the executioner said, all right, hurry up now. i got things to do tonight. And they said, he said, uh, that man told us to tell you that the blind see and the, and the lame walk and the deaf hear and the, and the poor have the gospel. And then John said, that's him. That's him. I've done my job. And he put his head down there and he said, get it about right here. Now, don't mangle me. I don't want to lie to no hospital. I mean, do this thing right. Get it right here. I'll have a brand new one before my toes quit wiggling. And he put it down like that right there. And that old boy goes, wow. And in the bucket goes John's head. And she puts it in the offering plate. And they take it over there to that uh, rich old crazy old wicked woman. And she walked around with it. That's another story. But King Herod that night, uh, when he heard about those great miracles, he said, John's come back. It's come back to get me. My sins has come back to haunt me. That's the event that brought this thing to pass uh, tonight. It was a great desire for sin. It was a great hatred for the things of God. They hated the Lord. They hated the Bible. They hated the church. And it come back. And I don't care how tough somebody is. I don't care how bad they act. I don't care how mean they talk. The day's coming, brother, when it'll all come back to haunt you one of these days. Ladies and gentlemen, the sin that you commit, it will come back to you. Number two, Herod's troubled conscience. Herod's troubled conscience. He knew that a man would be punished for his sin. He rejected John and no doubt was bothered by John's death. He heard him gladly and he respected him and he thought Jesus was John come back from the dead to torment him. Proverbs 13, 18 says, The way of a transgressor is hard. Think of all the other Bible stories that illustrate this truth. See David when he, when he was uh, uh, backslid and stayed at home when he ought to have been out there fighting. And David stayed home that day when his soldiers were supposed to be out fighting the battle. And he stayed home. And the Bible said that he saw that woman, uh, Bathsheba, over yonder on the roof, taking a bath and washing herself. And the lust came up inside of David. And he sent and took her. And he wasn't thinking. He just wasn't thinking. He wasn't thinking right. He wasn't thinking straight. And before he realized it, the devil had tricked him. And he had got that woman and stole her. And then he tried to cover up his sin by having her husband killed and I and, uh, got killed in battle and then married her and everything went along pretty good for a while and everything went along pretty good for a few days and, and then you know the story of Nathan the prophet and he come and pointed his finger at David and said you're the man and he called to remembrance his sin and David said now wait a minute, now wait a minute, Lord help me Lord help me and he said the Lord's put away your sin now and he said but you're going to pay for this, you're going to pay for this and I'll guarantee you, brother, nine months later, remember how long it was? Uh, about eight months probably from the time they got married. She was already pregnant when they got married. And when that baby was born, uh, David looked over there, and that little baby was sick. And, brother, that little baby got sick. And it got sick, and the doctor said it can't live. Listen to me tonight, people. It said he can't live. The baby can't live. The baby can't live. And David went into the hall of his prayer room, and he got down. What do you think David was thinking about? What do you think it come back to David's mind? He's saying, oh, God, oh, God, I had a man killed. 
Now it's come back to get me. I stole a man's wife. Now it's come back to haunt me. Listen, you young people here tonight, hear me. You can't just go out here and fool around and sin and get drunk and get high and have sex and mess around. It will. I said it will come back to haunt you. You say, well, you say it every time somebody's baby dies, they don't know. But in this case it was. The sin come back. What do you think David was thinking about when that baby was dying? What do you think David's mind was on when he walked around that funeral home and looked at that little baby in that casket? He's saying, oh, God. Oh, God, it came back. Yep, just a hair, Noah. It came back. I visited a man in the hospital who was yellow, literally yellow. His skin was yellow. When I walked in the hospital, there he laid, and he turned yellow. So, and you know, that's when, when somebody drinks alcohol, and it does that to them. You know, they get that disease, and, uh, and, the, and they, uh, they call it cirrhosis of the liver, and they and lay him there. And that man lay there, and he'd lay him, look at me, and he'd say, I messed up, Danny. I should have never done this. Man laying there in the hospital with his skin yellow. He remembers when he's out there drinking that liquor and he wouldn't listen to God and he wouldn't repent and he wouldn't get right. I'm telling you, it comes back. Don't you sit there and say, Oh, Brother Danny, he's just been preaching that for years, always screaming and hollering, warning us. You better listen to the warnings of God. You do reap what you sow. It does come back to get you one day. It does come back to haunt you. I talked to a man. You heard me tell about it. I went to visit him one day on visitation. Honest good, that man's arm's that big around. He could he could took me and broke me in two. I talked to him and he begged John. I said, John, why don't you get saved? He said, I can't. I said, Why? He said, I killed a man. And I said, well, John, I told him in the Bible uh, about Moses. I told him in the Bible about Saul. Had, Paul had people sent, murdered and stuff like that. And I tried. I said, God can forgive. That's not the impartable sin. And he said, I took a bayonet. And he said, I rammed it down a man's throat. And he said, at night, I can still hear him screaming. He said, it comes back to get me. They said one time, this man was in an insane institution for the insane. And he got loose somewhere and they couldn't find him. And they, they got, and finally somebody found him way outside of town up on this hill. There's an abandoned mine shaft, an old mine. And that, old, that guy was standing there looking down, screaming, down he goes. Down he goes. Down he goes. And there wasn't nobody within a mile. They said that that man, years before, had killed a man and dropped him down in there. And the guilt was so strong and heavy, he lost his mind. And they had to put him in an institution. And he got out and went right back to that spot, screaming, down he goes, down he goes, down he goes. I'm going to tell you something about sin, people. Let me tell you something about sin. Right when you just about think you've got away with it, bam, it pops up in your face. Just about the time you think you're smarter than everybody and you got it all figured out and nobody, your mama won't know, your daddy won't know, your husband won't know, bam. That book said, be sure your sin will find you out. The guilt that brought this sin to pass. His conscience bothered him. You say, well, Brother Danny, well, well, Brother Danny, your foot, you listen to me a minute. I'm telling you this, this, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, Herod, over yonder in the book of Acts, chapter 12, he come out that day, and he come out like this, and he said, uh, uh, he made a great oration, and the people exalted him a little too high. They said it's the voice of a god, little g, like them gods that had been there in the Old Testament. We'll study some other time. And he said it's the voice of a god, not a man. And he started getting glory like he was a god, and the angel of the Lord smote him. Bam! 
The worms ate him right there before him. His sin come back and got him. Samson, who was promiscuous in his lifestyle and messed around and messed around and messed around. What do you think Samson thought about when he was at the mill grinding with his eyes gone, pushing that thing around there, grinding that wheat? What do you think Samson was thinking? Oh, God, if I'd have never done that. Oh, God, if I'd have never done that. Oh, God, if I'd have never done that. Let me tell you something here tonight. God can forgive sin. God does forgive sin. God will bless you and forgive you of anything you've done. But there's always some kind of consequence to sin. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption it'll get you it'll get you thirdly tonight and this will be last what can you do about your past sins while I'm up here preaching somebody's sitting here thinking oh no preacher I thought that was all gone that was years ago that was now I'm not, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to heap a bunch of false guilt on you tonight. I'm not Sometimes if you'll repent and ask God to help you and forsake it, you'll get off easy. You'll get off easy. God's merciful. There's two ways to deal with sin. Whoso whoso covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You You want the best way out of your sin? Confess it. Say I was wrong. Don't try to justify it. Don't say, well, this and well, that. And under these circumstances, and I had a right. That's, that's a bunch of bull. Just say, I was wrong. I done wrong. God, I'm sorry. It ain't right. God, forgive me. I'm wicked. I'm low down. God, I'm sorry. By your grace, God, give me mercy. That's what David prayed. That's what David prayed. And God did bless David. God blessed him, gave him another son. He turned out to be Solomon. God did bless Samson. God did bless all these people that had mercy. You need mercy. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. Hallelujah. There's mercy with the Lord. There's mercy with the Lord tonight. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. There's mercy with the Lord tonight. I don't mean to paint a negative picture. Sin is awful, but the grace of God is bigger and greater where sin did abound grace did much more abound people amen I'm glad to say tonight there's mercy if you'll repent you know how God takes care of sin perfect atonement perfect righteousness and he sets a sinner free from guilt of the ghost of past sin All you need to do tonight is say, Lord, I'm a no good sinner. I'm wrong. The way to look at your sin is how God looks at it, not how society looks at it, not how people at work think, but how God looks at it in His Word. If He says it's wrong, it's wrong. Don't matter how I think, what I feel, how I think I was born, ain't got nothing to do with it. If He says it's wrong, wrong. Amen? Get real with God. Get honest with God. You get down to business with God, He'll get down to business with you. The ghost of past sin. If you're committing some kind of sin tonight, and you think, it don't matter. Nobody's perfect. Everybody sins. I'm warning you tonight, it'll hit you right in the face one of these days. The best thing to do with sin is forsake it. Stand by our head for prayer.